Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Nomopolis, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Nomopolis, or what will soon be known as New Nomopolis, because here's the situation. Humans are encroaching on our gnomish mountain territory. And so, we have decided to move our old ancient capital, over here represented by this big population of gnomes and all of our money, we've decided to move our ancient capital to the new capital, deep, deep, deep underground, where the humans will not bother us. And so, to achieve this, each player is a building manager who has their own little section of this new location that we're trying to build buildings and encourage uh, immigration so that people leave the old capital and move to the new capital. And how do we do this? With our labor force here. Everybody starts with two kids, which are what the green gnomes are, and four regular villagers, which are what the brown gnomes are. And by the way, everybody gets a cup. The game comes with four perfectly usable drinking cups if you'd like to drink your gnomes. Oh, that did not taste good. Alrighty. Um, so, as part of setup, each player gets a starting workforce of one, two, three randomly. I got the most common. Uh, so, Two regular laborers and a kid who's not really good for much of anything because he's a kid or she's a kid. Jen, meanwhile, has probably the same one, two, three. Yep. All right. So we've got our starting workforce with more uh, at the ready to be called upon. Uh, six random buildings have been chosen from the deck. More will be coming. And the four advisors are watching every step of the way, because if we can get them on our side, they can give us immediate and long-term benefits. Okay, so how does it work? Well, the uh, turn summary on the last page, it pretty much sums it all up. It's super simple. Do all your actions with your active gnomes. If you want to, build one building. And at the end of your turn, uh, move all the gnomes that were uh, either to the new capital or to your exhausted area. And then at the end of your turn, draw three more gnomes. Couldn't be simpler. So let's get going. I got three laborers here. What am I going to do with them? Well, I have worker placement spots right here on my board. Although this one requires soldiers. This one requires merchants. This one requires artisans, and this one requires engineers, inventors. Obviously, I don't have any of them. I do have a kid, and you'll notice I've got a space where I could send this kid. And basically what this is, is training the kid to become a proper laborer. And you'll notice there's a little X on the worker placement spot. That means I am going to jettison this kid. I will not have this gnome figure anymore, uh, because... Uh, he'll end up going off to the new capital. It represents like new kids being born in the capital, I suppose. And I'll have another brown worker who will be exhausted. So I could do that right off the bat. But looking at the buildings that are available... Because remember, we're trying to build this new city. We're here to build these buildings. In fact, the main most often way the game will be end will be triggered is once a player has built six buildings. So I want to build a building. On the left side here, it says what it takes. Two regular brown... Uh, villagers, two brown villagers, two brown villagers, a villager and a soldier, a villager and a merchant, a villager and a soldier. So I have two brown workers. So how about I build something? How about I start out by building a hospital? Or a uh, factory? Or, yeah, or, or the, uh, the merchant house. That's what I'm going to build. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to have those two guys build this building for me. Well done, guys. Now, a couple things happen every time you build a building. Uh, besides maybe ending the game if you've built your sixth building. Alrighty, first of all, immigration happens because they see stuff. In this case, three kids are going to move into my neck of the woods. One, two, three. So they come over here exhausted because they're excited about a rich, prosperous future in mercantilism. Alrighty, also... Since I just built a merchant-based building, that's what this icon is, I have to check the merchant advisor over here. And um, since I have the majority of merchant buildings, this guy is on side with me. He thinks, hey, you're doing pretty good there. I'm going to come and join you because clearly you are invested in the mercantile arts. As a reward for that, I immediately get one coin, also known as a victory point. If I still have this guy at the end of the game, he will give me two more coins. So I could make more. And in the meantime, as long as I have him, I have access to another worker placement spot where I can send one of my regular brown laborers to get two more points. So that's pretty cool. Now, I don't have any more brown laborers available to do that, but I do still have my kid here. And remember, I was talking about how I could just use him to train to get another brown laborer. 
Uh, instead, I'm going to use him at this brand new merchant house I got. And again, there's the little X that indicates I, I don't put him standing up. Because if I put him standing up, that means I'm going to keep them and they'll go back in my cup eventually. I put him lying down because that means I'm going to lose this meeple. <clears throat> and what do I get for sending this kid off to the merchant house to train? I make another point and I get a brand spanking new merchant. Alrighty, I have used up all of my workers. I built one building. I can only build once per turn. And so my turn is over. These guys who are still standing are now exhausted from all that working. They'll join these new kids who just moved in and the kid who just got trained to be a uh, merchant. And this kid, well, represents new life being born in the capital, new capital over there. There's now that. Alrighty. My turn is over. At the end of my turn, I draw so that I can start planning my next move while everybody else is up and at them. All right. Jen's turn. She has the same four workers as me. Oh, also, every time you build a building, a new one immediately comes out. And it's a park that requires a merchant and a villager to build. And it means it's a place you can send kids to make money. Um, I guess this Ferris wheel must be generating power or something like that. Also, another thing I should say about the park or the merchant house or the factory. By the way, I guess I, I guess these ancient gnomes speak Latin, uh, since it seems like all these are these are Latin terms like the portus and the porta and all that. Anyway, at the end of the game, everybody who I've recruited to move into my neck of the woods is going to need some place to be housed. Right now, at the end of the game, I've got a place where I could house one merchant and one soldier. And if I house a merchant and a soldier here, I'll make two bucks for each of them. So that'll be four bucks. Uh, so not only am I building to try to start creating little, you know, goods transformation engines, but I'm also building with an eye towards ensuring I've got housing for everybody at the end of the game. We'll worry about that later. The end of the game is a long ways off. It is Jen's turn. So her green guy could be trained. Uh, her, she, her, you know, these two guys could come and build a factory or a hospital. What does Jen want to do? Well, Jen definitely wants to build as well so that she can get one of these folks on side with her, um, you know, to, to make a little bit of money and all of that. So I think Jen will build, let's see, the factory, which means one worker will immediately come and join us. We have a place to house a soldier and an inventor at the end of the game. And this says in the factory, if you use one of your regular brown workers, you immediately get to draw two more gnomes from the cup and put them to work that turn. So Jen can start cycling through her deck faster. Or not her deck, her cup. But if you think of this in deck builder terms. So that's pretty cool. I think Jen would like to build a factory or a uh, fabrica. All right. I'm assuming that's Latin for factory. I'm not quite certain. So Jen has built her first of potentially six buildings. Okay. Jen, uh, that made a new worker emigrate. Or immigrate. Or I guess emigrate and immigrate. And a Jen has now gotten this gnomish advisor on hand, which gives Jen one coin. And uh, now is a place where we can spend, send our regular brown, not discard them, because there's no X on it. We can use our regular guys to build automated gnomes that help us build faster. Okay. So that was that. Jen still has a kid. And now, Jen doesn't have a nice merchant house like I do to train the kid. So Jen could just send him over here to train him to be a regular worker. Which isn't bad because, hey, Jen's got a place. Jen's got two places to send regular workers now. Jen could do something else if she wants, though. Jen could, uh, instead of sending this kid here to train him to be a, a regular villager laborer, Jen could send him over to the armadillo. What is the armadillo, you ask? It's these things! As far as setup, everybody gets an armadillo, these cool little armadillo meeples that um, the gnomes can ride around on. Now, in a two-player game, you don't need them. But what Jen could do is, by sending the kid here, virtually what that means is, the kid got on an armadillo and rode over to my area, and Jen can use one of my worker placement spots. So Jen could send her kid to my Mercatus to get a merchant and a buck. Um, so that sounds great, right? The only downside is, for Jen, using my stuff, I will, from the supply, not from Jen, but from the supply, get another coin. So Jen would be giving me a point to have her armadillo have the kid come over and get trained as a merchant. Jen might be inclined to do that, but since she now has two spots that can put regular brown workers to work, I think Jen doesn't mind just training up a regular gnome. There we go. Okay, so Jen is done. 
And at the end of her turn, these guys, they're exhausted, ready to work in the future. This kid is gone. And, um, right, we're moving. Uh oh, and then Jen draws her next three, which, again, no surprises there. For the first time you go through your deck. And now it's my turn again. And what do I want to do? Well, I'll have this other kid. I'll just train him to be another merchant. Why not? I am deep into the uh, mercantile because I made a point and I've turned a useless kid into a merchant. Although, see, I'm creating a problem for myself. Oh, by the way, totally forgot. After built, Jen built the, um, I think this is a firehouse. The uh, Vigilat Vigilante Igni Ignisius or something like that. Oh, my Latin. Anyway, though. So, at the end of the game, I will lose a point for every merchant I have who doesn't have housing. Currently, I only have one place to house this merchant. So before this game is over, I either want to guild, uh, build another building, like say, the, like this firehouse or this portus, so I'll have housing for him, because otherwise I'll lose a point. But that's a problem for the future. Right now, I've just trained um, another merchant, and I've got two more laborers. I could have one of them go to work to get me two coins. Coins are... Um, you know, our points in this game, or I could use these two guys to build another building. Now, speaking of it, I really do want to build this building because this is really interesting. Um, this allows me to discard to jettison to you know uh, a merchant to generate three wild gnomes, any color gnome I want. And, though, and that could include more yellow merchant gnomes to just keep on building a bigger and bigger workforce so I can do all kinds of stuff. But the bigger, more diverse workforce I have, the harder a time I will have at um, actually housing them all at the end of the game. So, I think I'm just going to have these guys build something for me, though. Ooh, this is interesting. Jen's not going to like this. I'm going to build... What am I going to build? I'm going to build... Hmm, I was going to build a hospital... But that's going to make two more kids want to move into my neck of the woods. And I already have too many kids. Now, fortunately, kids are easy to house. I can house up to three kids at the end of the game. But, I mean, I can't do anything with kids other than turn them very slowly, one at a time, into merchants. And what I was thinking, if I could build um, this tree house here, this Domus Arborea, this is a place where I can use kids to get access to a special power. If I do the park, kids can be put to work to make money. But I can't build those because I don't have a special worker yet. The only one I could build, I could build the hospital or um, the firehouse where I need to use soldiers. Um, and I, I don't have any soldiers. But I need merchant, or I need inventors at the hospital. So it's not like either of those are going to work for me. But, I'll build the hospital anyway, and I'll show you why. So, I built a hospital. This is my second building. A new building comes out. The uh, Horologiorium, which I think is like a clockmaker, I think. Ah, uh, anyway. Um, so, I built this building. Two more kids are going to move into my neck of the woods. And by the way, you'll notice, there are now no more young people in the old capital. If... We have a situation where I need to recruit more young people. They will now come from the new capital. Uh, over time, all these guys are going to go away. Over time, we're going to take all the money out of the old capital and bring it over to the new capital. There's three ways the game can end. Either a, uh, a player has built six buildings, or all the gnomes have left the capital, or all the money has left the capital. Those are the three ways it ends. So anyway, I've got all these kids now, because I've just brought two more in. But look what happened. I have now um, built towards this, uh, you know, the the, the engineering um, advisor, and you don't have to have the majority of them. You just have to tie. Jen took the majority when um, she built her factory, but now that I have built this hospital, I've tied her, which means this person comes over to me. Woohoo! And I immediately get another point. And now I've got another place. So I've got two places I could send brown laborers. Well, that doesn't help me because I got all these, these green laborers that I need to deal with. Okay. So I, I snuck that from Jen. But you know what? Now, if Jen builds another building with this, uh, she will take it back from me. And at the end of the game, whoever has this scores two more points. Okay. So I am done. Uh, this goes away. These guys are exhausted, and I have to draw. My cup is empty, and like any good deck builder, when a cup is empty, you refill it with all the stuff. And now, here's what I'm worried about. My fast, rapid expansion to bring all these kids in means I'm going to have a hand of nothing but kids next turn, which would not be great. It would not be great, but we'll see what happens. I want to see those engine. I want to see those merchants. Show me those merchants. One, two... Ah! 
Three. Ah! No merchants. All right. Which means I can't build the port, which I really do want to build. Okay. So that was my turn. Jen's turn. So she, while, you know, obviously while all that was going on, Jen was thinking about what she wanted to do. Um, Jen had a place, uh, you know, Jen can no longer send her guy over here to get a robot. Jen will, however, send one of her regular villagers and he will get wiped out through this action. Um, you know, working in the factory, Jen now immediately gets to draw two more, which she doesn't have any. So she immediately refills her cup and draws two more. So she just turned one laborer into two. And more importantly, she did deck thinning because now this guy is out of the way. So in the future, she'll be able to draw better stuff. Now that won't happen until the end of the round. Okay. So that was that. Jen now has three more laborers, which means she could build... Uh, see, the last building we can build, only with laborers, the firehouse. Jen will build that. Okay. Well, now she needs a soldier to run this thing. And in the meantime, kids show up. There are no more kids in the old kingdom, so now kids in the new kingdom show up, ready to um, join Jen's crew. All righty. And Jen still has another kid, and she has a regular laborer. Oh, and a new building came out, of course. It was the Ferraria, which I don't even know what that is. Um, but anyway, so Jen will go on ahead and train this kid to become, ah, does she want another laborer? She has enough of those. Because instead, Jen could, remember I talked about this, Jen could say, hey kid, get on the armadillo. So now the armadillo fires up, comes over here, and Jen, it's like Jen sent this kid to any of my spots. Jen will send this kid to my merchant house, which means he will get eliminated. It means you go back to new. Jen gets a point. Jen gets a merchant. Okay. And now Jen has one more laborer. She will send him over here to train him to become a soldier who will then be able to work. Oh, and by the way, I totally forgot. When Jen built this, of course, when Jen built this, um, this was the defense. This particular person was very impressed. Jen got a coin from that, and, oh, you know what? You know what Jen could have done with this last guy? Instead of just training him to be a soldier, Jen could have sent this guy up here to activate her new best friend, which means she gets to draw two more from the cup, which will be these two. Boom, boom! And just like that, on this turn, Jen has had a super turn because she's activated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven workers! Whoa! Okay, so Jen's not done yet. She started with three, but she's getting a lot of stuff done. Now, um, she could... No, she you can only build once per turn, so Jen cannot build that. Jen will train this guy to become the soldier. And... So Jen has one guy left, and unfortunately... I think Jen has run out of actions to do uh, because all these spaces are blocked. So Jen can't train him. Jen can't have him draw another two. Jen cannot get him on an armadillo to send him over to mine because that space is blocked. So Jen is done. But still, that was a huge turn. One, two, three, four. All right. So at the end of her turn, uh, ones that are laying down, go to the new capital. Ones that are standing up still, get exhausted. Somebody who didn't get used, also gets exhausted, or bored, I suppose. And now Jen's got to draw. Her cup is empty. So let's see. She wants to see that soldier. One, two, three. Wow, nothing but workers. But hey, uh, that means she'll get to that soldier sooner. And don't forget, Jen will be able to draw two more if she wants. Jen could draw four between this guy and that guy. So uh, Jen can have continue to have really big turns because of her investment in invention and military. So she is done. It is my turn. And now I've got these two kids. What the heck am I going to do with them? I'm probably going to train one to become a regular worker because I got, I got too many kids, too many young people with no valuable skills. Uh, you know, I'll probably send them over here to get another merchant. And, um, but I didn't draw the merchant I wanted. I do want to draw that merchant because I want to build that port. And here's the thing. I'm worried now. I want that port. I know Jen has a merchant, thanks to me. Did I give myself a coin when Jen visited me? I don't think I did. I think I forgot to do that. If I did, uh, Paula will make note of it. Remember, anytime somebody visits you, you get a coin. Not from that player, but from the supply. I think I forgot to do that. Um, I want to build this port before Jen gets there. And I know Jen will be able to draw this guy because she can draw a bajillion guys. So, if I want my merchant out, I could take a chance, put him on the armadillo, 
to come over to Jen's neck of the woods to use him, either eliminate him or keep him, to draw two more, and then hopefully I'll get my guy, but then I'll be giving Jen a coin? I don't want to do that, but let's do it. And let's just say I'm going to get rid of this guy because I am visiting um, Jen's advisor. I'm going to draw two more and show me... Yes! Yes, exactly what I needed. And so now these two guys will come over here and build the port, which was my plan as my third building. Now, unfortunately, I was already in good with the merchant, so I don't get to steal the last one over here, the artisan, or take the military one away from her. But uh, in the meantime, another laborer joins my workforce, and another young person joins my workforce because of my third building. And all righty, all righty, Roo. And so from now on, I'm, I'm probably going to draw my next merchant pretty soon, which means I can send them over here and start getting all kinds of specialty workers like uh, Inventor to work in my hospital and various and sundry things. So I can keep my engine going. So I built that. I gave Jen a coin, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. The uh, Solarium is now here. The Solari. The Solari. And I got nobody else to work, so you're gone. You're gone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're gone. Bye-bye. You two are still here. And I am done, and it's Jen's turn. And Jen will say, you, get to work. Let me draw more. And then draw, Jen draws four more. One, two, three, four. And she didn't get her soldier. How did that happen? Ah, oh, she can't run her firehouse. That's crazy. Go figure. Um, but Jen's not done yet. She's still got five more workers. Now, uh, one thing I haven't talked about is, so Jen has this merchant. Um, she could use them to build a Solari, or the regular, you know, the, the upgraded workers, they have dedicated spots. Jen could use her merchant just to come over here to get two coins. She could do that for the rest of the game if she wanted. Um, if Jen were to have drawn that soldier, that soldier either could have been sent over to her firehouse to make money and give her a gnome of her choice. That'd be very cool. Or the fireman, or the, uh, you know, the, the soldier could come over here and let Jen draw two more cups. So Jen could be drawing one, two, three, four, five, six gnomes every turn if she ha if she starts with the right gnomes ready to work. And let's see, if you have a an artisan, their uh, power is very, very cool. This little... Um, uh, you know, actually, you can see it right here. This is having a kid to do the artisan ability if you have the treehouse. What this means is you can, your choice, either take anybody from the cup or from the exhausted area that you want and get them into your active area, or you can take somebody off of an occupied workspace, move them into the exhausted area, and then you could do that action again. So that gives you a lot of flexibility too. The artisans. Not that anybody has an artisan yet. And finally, the inventors, you can always use them to build a robot. Um, which are very, very cool because you can have any number of these you want. They're not worth any points at the end of the game. These little uh, automated gnomes. But you can use them as a wild to help you build buildings. A couple of robots could... Normally you need a couple of inventors, but you could build this uh, building, uh, the clockmaker, with a couple of robots if you wanted. Uh, so the robots can be very, very powerful as well if you have an inventor. But if you have an inventor, hey, maybe you want to use them over here to get you two robots and two bucks. Depends on what type of engine you are building in Gnomopolis. And that, folks, should give you a pretty good idea of how the game plays. And if you want to hear some final thoughts about it, you can hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.